Oh, happy Thursday, everybody. Oh, do we do we have a show for you tonight? It's incredible. You're going to want to stick around, that's for sure. We have had a heck of a week. I'll tell you what, we've gotten a show together. Oh, just, it's just a great show. But not only that, we officially launched our Cocktails with Cav After Hours live show uh, where producer Drunk Doug and I get together and have to blow off some steam after all this great content creation. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, we'll be streaming live on X and Rumble. And uh, hey, hit that notification bell so you never miss a show. That's our Cocktails with Cav After Hours offering. You're going to want to stick around. It's a lot more raunchy. I mean, uh, fun. It's a lot more fun. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Oh, a little quick bit of housekeeping. Please check our links in the description. Please consider supporting the Cocktails with Cavs show so we can keep bringing you all these great indie creators. Cheap cup of coffee is all it takes at our Buy Me a Coffee link. Uh, As well as check out our merch page. A lot of great swag. Great way to support the show. Well, like I was telling you... Great show tonight. Tonight's guest, I tell you what, not only an incredible author, but she's one of the hardest working ladies in L.A., I can tell you that. She even runs a group that uh, helps Latinx creators. She's just phenomenal and has an incredible series of novels, The Werewolf Whispers, and you're going to want to get to know her. So please grab a cocktail, relax, let's get to know, and welcome to the stage. Bonita Gutierrez. Oh, Bonita, I'm so glad you could finally join us. How, how are you doing, ma'am? I am great. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, God, no, the pleasure's all mine. I tell you, I've, I've been wanting to have you on ever since I got to know you on X. Just a, you know, wonderful person to interact with. But your work is just, you, you're working hard out there in Los Angeles, I, I'm, right? I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to, you know, I'm hustling. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I, the life of the indie creator, right? You're hustling. Absolutely. <laughs> every day, every day. Oh, well, I'll tell you, yeah. And on your bio, you know, you author, actor, producer, you work working it really good. But uh, yeah, please, we, we like the viewers to get to know the creators for sure. Uh, and, and of course, we're going to talk about some of your great work in a few minutes. Uh, but please let, let the viewers get to know you a little bit, uh, if you could. Okay, so well, my name is Bonita Gutierrez. I am um, I am an actor turned author. So I I worked in um, film and television for quite a while, and um, and I started writing um, about fifteen years ago or so. Um, but um, uh, I did some short films, and I did short film circuit, and um, I, I did one called Cantar, which was a, a short film about a young woman trying to make it in uh, as a singer. And it was kind of based loosely based on my dad, who was a Mexican American uh, singer in the 60s. He was a crooner. And so it was kind of loosely based on him about dreams and, and how hard they are to and how you pursue them and how hard it can be. And, and so, and, um, so I did that. And then, um, I, so I was writing scripts and screenplays and, um, and then I, uh, reconnected with an old college friend and we started writing together and we decided to write a web series and that web series wound up turning into the werewolf whisper series. So, um, yeah, so I've been, I, I kind of sort of took all of the acting and producing and sort of became this author. And so that's what I've been doing now predominantly for the last decade. So yeah. <laughs> that's where I've been <laughs> in that world. <laughs> and it, well, and you know, I find, uh, you know, coming, from acting into writing, do you find it 
assist you in, in scene creation and, and well, yeah, character I mean, development, obviously. Yeah, it's. I, I tell people, I, I say, you know, I'm, it was never my intention to, to be a writer in the world. And I was always film and television acting. That was kind of, but, and I, I have my degree in theater. I spent my youth in theater. <laughs> That's what I was doing. <laughs> And, but it all is storytelling. It doesn't really matter if you're the one saying the words or the one writing the words or, or filming the words or, you know, it's, it's all storytelling. And so I think, yeah, I think it all sort of built all of that laid the foundation to what I'm doing today. And, um, I still love acting. I still, and, and, and I act out my scene, I act out the scenes and the chapters that I do. So <laughs> it does help. Um, so, you know, I'm always reading aloud what I'm saying, what the dialogue is. Does that sound real? Does it not? So, yeah, I think, I think that all has laid the foundation to what I'm doing today. So, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And when you talk about dialogue, because I know I had a, yeah. Geez, as a creator, a lot of trouble. You know, some authors do have a problem making that dialogue realistic. And uh, and I found it helped me, uh, like once I wrote my first screenplay and, and in the process of converting that to a novel, it's, you, you, it helps with the dialogue. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, um, it's different. Like, excuse me, I'm going to have a little drink. Ah, that's <laughs> we're it, it's cocktails with calf. Feel free, we don't judge. <laughs> okay, um, but um, yeah. So, um, the dialogue thing. I think having read so many plays and been in theater, and and that actually came pretty naturally for me. It was all the rest of it that I had to really learn how to how because I wrote I've written a few screenplays and and I know you know you don't necessarily some some screenwriters are very descriptive but a lot are just you know this is the this is what's happening in the scene and then they go into C the city street oh. night right or, or you know so and so grabs this and then it's a big thing and, and sometimes it's a little bit longer my husband's a screenwriter and so you know I, I've spent a lot of time reading his screenplays and and you know and going and, and learning from him so, but it's, it's one of these things that it, it, that part didn't, I didn't have a problem with the writing of the actual dialogue. It's the, I had to learn how to like take those descriptions and make them into you know, thousands of words. Right, right. <laughs> like, you know, and, I was, Ooh. and I, you know, I jumped in with two feet and, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, well, well, apparently you, you're doing a, a good enough job at it. You, you, you. I've got, yeah, I feel like I'm okay at it. I feel like I'm okay at it. I feel like I, over the years I've, I've, I've gotten better and better. And I, you know, I, um, and I think that now I feel, yeah, okay. This is what I do, you know? Yeah. You know, because at the beginning you're like, I don't know. I guess I'm doing this, you know? <laughs> That's it. Well, and, and I tell you, but, you know, having gone over a, a lot of your work, it's just, well, the genre you write in fascinates me anyway, that urban fantasy and- I love it. You know, <laughs> it is, it's, it's wonderful. But yeah, before we talk about that, uh, as we're still getting to know you, I know you do a lot of extra curricular work for indie creators too. You know, uh, yeah. you have the uh, Latinx- uh, Our Latinx Indie Author Alliance, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's a pretty prolific face a Facebook group that you, you try to help other indie creators as well. Yeah, too. I, I was, um, again, I hear on, on X, I, I, I met, um, horror author, um, Adrian Lopez. And then we kind of were back and forth here and on TikTok, and, you know, now, now we're all over social media together, so it doesn't right. really matter. but he and I were talking and, um, we both felt like there was this kind of void there wasn't a space for La Latino uh, creatives to like help each other grow. And um, I just pitched him the idea of it and he said, yeah, let's do it. So, so we, we started the, the, the group back in late January, early February. And it was just, we wanted to build a community for uh, 
Latinos uh, to come together and help each other uh, grow as as artists and to get our voices out into the world because I felt like there there's really um, a, there's there's I think a want for that community but but not a, a, a place for them to gather and grow each and help each other grow so that's that was the premise behind the group and so we're slowly building it and um, and it and um, you know we just keep moving forward with um, I I'm a very I'm a big supporter I've always been kind of a big cheerleader of other creatives and and I and so is and so is Adrian so we kind of have that in common and I think um, I feel like what you put out into the world you get back you know so oh, hopefully. Okay. Ab absolutely karma's a bitch <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe uh, a really wonderful a really wonderful friend <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but no and, and it is wonderful because i tell you it and i'm sure you could speak to it probably more than i can uh but just having to get you know ha having to have gotten to know a lot of indie creators it's it's just hard work you know obviously because it's it's you're you you're not only creating you're being you're the rest of the corporation yeah <laughs> the corporation. well it's funny because i mean um well i also run uh my husband and my entertainment business it's called nemesis kitten entertainment and it's his he's a professional screenwriter and so i also run that business so i'm used to being um always doing being the corporation <laughs> right, so, right. so yeah it, it is it's it you know as an indie author it's not just writing the book it's it's marketing the book it's you know doing all the promotion it's going out into the public it's or it's you know um it, you know everything that goes along with it. it's how, budgeting it's you know, it's you know figuring out how much money i can spend this month on that um it, yeah, it is everything. It is you are a business unto yourself, and you are, um, you know, work for yourself. So uh, that's, you know, it is. It's it's a, it's a lot. It's a twenty four seven. So, you know, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's not oh yeah, and it, it's <laughs> well, you know, and indie creators have such heart and soul. And I always say this, you know, there's just a, so much great indie work out there that goes undiscovered just because of that very reason that it's just so so much hard work but uh it's so i appreciate a lot of hard it work and there's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of people doing it and and so i mean you, you know I, the, the thing about the author community i find is that for the most part is very supportive of each other the indie author group they it's like people want to help each other out you know whether it's tips and how to do this or that and the other thing how to you know or or it's just you know sharing somebody's work i i find i find that the community is very supportive of each other um so which is helpful because in the entertainment industry it can be very you know out for yourself kind of thing and um and but the um that, if you hear a jingling, that's my dog. <laughs> it, it happened. That would be my dog, my little pooch, Loki. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, where was I? I don't know. <laughs> Just talking about how hard it is. <laughs> yeah, but it is. It's, it's it's hard. But when you when you're in a community that that's willing to support each other, then it you know takes a little of the burden off. I think. But. Yeah, and it is. I've, I've found I've really been appreciative of, of the X community and, and kind of one of the reasons I started this show, you know, is, is just that assist and help get people out in front of people, you know, and, and that's half the battle for sure. It <laughs> really know? is. Just being seen, you know. <laughs> That's it. Well, I'm glad you're on the show. We're gonna have to let people see your hard work. I, and I'm uh, so when we come back, look, I gotta refill my cocktail. And uh, yeah, when we come back, let's tear into your incredible urban fantasy series, The Werewolf Whispers. Uh, I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just taking a quick mid-roll break to remind you to please go check out my Linktree profile. Uh, the link's at the top of my X profile, as well as scrolling right here across the screen for you. 
You can subscribe for free and you'll never miss one of the great cocktails with Cav offerings. A lot of great information and of course, all the links you'll ever need. You'll have the latest cocktails with Cav episode, interviews with great indie authors, entertainers, and artists, as well as our link to our Spotify audio only podcast, our new cocktails with Cav after hours live show with me and producer Drunk Doug, as well as all the ways to support the show and all of our other social media links so you can find us where you tend to hang out. Oh, so again, ladies and gentlemen, please go check out my Linktree profile. Again, the links at the top of my X profile or scrolling right here for you. Linktree slash Reed Cavanaugh. You can't miss it. Ah, oh, Bonita, thanks for hanging out with me. I, ne- I needed a refill because I was so excited you're here. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> you got to get that refill in. <laughs> That's it. Well, look, I tell you, it, thanks for sharing a little bit about your background and everything with us and, and definitely about your help with the other indie creators. But I'll tell you what, I, I wanted to have you on the show for, for your great creations. And, and I hope we can you could tell us all about it because uh get you out in front of people because i i'm just in love with the the apocalyptic urban fantasy genre you know oh, that you yeah. have going with the werewolf whisperer series and uh yeah please t- tell us all about it how, how did this come about now you, you look like such a kind genteel lady ah, <laughs> well if you only knew <laughs> no um so the werewolf whisper um actually came about um when uh my uh collaborate my co-author the co-author of the book series camilla oakland and i were working on one of uh, a product we were working on a, a short film that she had written and she had pitched the idea of what would happen if if and there was a dog on this particular film set and she said well, what would happen if you know a dog trainer could actually control werewolves and it was sort of it was a kind of a a, a pitch about oh what if this was a, a a werewolf apocalypse and the only person that could control them was basically a cop who happens to work for the animal cruelty task force in los angeles and she has this weird ability to control these werewolves so that's kind of, that was the basic premise and um we were talking about doing it as a web series and this was back in 2012 okay so um web series were uh, were around but they weren't as good as the stuff you see now couldn't shoot the way you could shoot like you can now everybody's got a camera phone that shoots hd which you didn't have back then right and so uh we were writing the the scene we wrote a, a whole season 13 episodes and we were going to get ready. We're both actors. We wanted to do something to produce. And, and, um, and so we, uh, wrote this first season and we're talking to, um, another producer friend of mine, um, Stephanie Thorpe, and she was going to come on to produce. And then we were kind of budgeting it out and realized it was going to be incredibly expensive to do it the right way. Um, uh, yeah, and so yeah. we just didn't have that kind of money or the budget or a way to get that budget. Cause again, GoFundMe and all that stuff was not happening really. <laughs> so <laughs> Kickstarter was not around really. <laughs> so it was like, people very, don't realize, like, pe- people yeah. don't realize how just, you know, how, how yeah. Things so, have advanced I, in just a decade, you know? Yeah. And it really has. And so, um, <laughs> it just kind of evolved into, well, hey, do you want to write it as a book series? And I, again, never wrote a book before. So I was like, okay, let's do it. And so we we started working on it and um, we wrote the first draft and then we rewrote the first draft and then we rewrote it again. And then by 2014, we were we, in between, we were trying to decide whether or not we wanted to um, uh, self what we took we sent we, we query the the book series and go the you know traditional route but we were like but yeah but there's this whole thing on amazon that you can do and why not let's try publishing it ourselves so that's what we did and um we published the first book and it was well received and so we started writing we wrote the second now we wrote the third we've got four novellas we're writing ah. the fifth and the sixth or the fourth and the fifth books 
Um, and so the series is about um, a, a, um, a mysterious virus hits Los Angeles and um, turns an inordinate amount of uh, Californians into werewolf-like creatures. And there's only- I thought you were gonna say Democrats. No, yeah, no. <laughs> and um, and then there's this this uh, woman Lucy Lowell who is a police officer and she works for the Animal Cruelty Task Force um, discovers that she can control them and she has her uh, best friend is her former uh, uh, CI who. Um, who they go on the road and they help these people they're called the afflicted and the first book starts two years later so it starts the world has been changed for two years basically california is quarantined this is all happening they go up and down california helping the afflicted they're coming back to los angeles to give a seminar and they're approached by a friend a former friend of um, Sochi's, who's the site, who's basically the uh, the um, partner, um, who needs help, and so they go on this road trip from hell <laughs> to <laughs> to um, help this friend out. And in between, the the book is um, is told um, from present and past uh, timelines. So there's dual timelines. So you get this whole origin story of how they became this team and it starts out they're already the team but then you see how they became the team in interwoven with this main story and then as the books grow so does the story so it starts out in los angeles and gets bigger and bigger and bigger till they gets to be a worldwide thing and um that's where you get alpha and omega and blood and bones so um yeah, and I was I, yeah, I'm fa I was fascinated by the story. That's for sure. And and how many books are y'all going for in this series? Or uh, um, we are little scoop on cocktails we have. That's we're <laughs> five. It's gonna we five books is the intended has always been the intended run for the series. So we're um, the I we like book one, two, and three uh, are kind of part one, and then four and five will be part two, and um, we have four novellas, the first three novellas, Beast Navidad, Beast, uh, No Beast So Fierce, and Beast Out of Hell, all take place prior to book one, The Werewolf Whisperer. And then we have uh, uh, Beast of the Dead, which, um, which bridges the book three, uh, Blood and Bones, to the next book, which is called Tooth and Claw. <laughs> so, ah, ah. so we're working on Tooth and Claw right now. And um, hopefully we'll have that out by the end of the year. That's the plan. And oh. yeah, I hope. So um, we're both, we both write other things. So, it, you know, was, we're trying to get this one done in between all the other things that we're doing. So, um, oh, well, goodness, well, we're, we're, we'll be looking forward to it. That's for sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> a real, it's funny it's 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 got a lot of heart it's got a lot of action um it's i think it's i think it reads very cinematically but it's it's also got a complex mystery behind it so it's not it's not just a it's we like to say it's not your grandma's werewolf tale <laughs> <laughs> awesome. it's, it's, there's a lot going on it's a big mystery and um every word in the book means something so don't pass over the words. <laughs> That's right. So when you're buying the book, remember that when you're reading it. Very <laughs> well. Oh, well, Benita, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing about yourself and, and your help for other indie creators with the Latinx uh, group you started, but also your incredible work, uh, the Werewolf Whisperer series. Everybody, go, please, go to Amazon, check that out. Uh, of course, all the links will be in the show description. And and by all means, please go give Benita a follow on X. She's a great member of the writing community there. Uh, her screen name, at Bonita's MG, uh, it is right there on her video for you. But uh, but yeah, and by all means, you also have your link tree. Um, yes. I believe I have that pulled up so everybody can get a gander of that too. 
has a lot of great contacts for uh, Bonita and all her uh, other social media platforms as well. So by all means, please go check Bonita out. And Bonita, again, I know I said it before, but I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing with us. Thank you. Cheers. Ah, cheers to you. <laughs> <laughs>